It's time to take a look at the abstract strategy board game Shobu from Smirk and Laughter Games, who we have to thank for letting us snag a review copy at Origins. Shobu is a two-player only board game designed by Jamie Sajik and Manolis Vranis that was published by Smirk and Dagger Games under their Smirk and Laughter imprint back in 2019. This vaguely chess-like game is quick to learn with an age suggestion of 8+, plus, but can be quite difficult to master. While the playtime is listed as 15 to 30 minutes, we've seen games go longer when you have a couple of equally matched players who spend a lot of time planning their moves. So Shobu is a grid-based, slide-and-push style abstract strategy game featuring four boards with four stones for each player on a line on opposite ends of each board. These are four by four boards. Each turn, players will take a passive movement, moving one of their stones on their half of the table. Then they'll take an aggressive move that mirrors that original move, but has to be made on the opposite colored board. This aggressive mood is the one that can push other stones around, and your goal is to clear one of the four boards of your opponent's stones. One of the things that sticks out about this game is the components, which you mm -hmm. can get a good look at in our Shobu unboxing video on YouTube. Now, what you're going to see there are four wooden boards, too light, too dark, with a 4 by 4 grid on one side of each of them. There's a silk knotted rope, 17 stones in two colors, light and dark, and a rule book that's really a single page, two-sided folded in half. No, do you only get 17 stones, but you only need 16. The bonus is a nice quality of life improvement there in case you lose any of your stones. The rules here are particularly good, with plenty of examples using photos of the game being played with graphical overlays showing legal and illegal moves. Yeah, I particularly like this, like someone took a camera and took pictures of the game being played. You don't usually see that in rulebook. Now, one thing I do think is worth noting here is that, yes, you could easily make your own copy of Shobu uh, with sheets of paper and coins, or you could go down to the beach and draw the board into the sand and use shells and rocks. That said, the components here are nice, and I don't mind paying for a game I could make myself, even if it's just to compensate the creators. Well, let's move on to a more concise overview of play in Shobu. Start by setting out the boards grouped so that each player has a light and dark board in front of them with a matching set on the opponent's side. Place the silk rope between these and then place four rocks from each player on each board so the rocks are on the rows closest to their player. Whoever is playing black goes first. Each turn, players make two moves, a passive move and an aggressive move, and they have to be made in that order. You have to complete your passive move, and then you have to make your aggressive move, and you always have to make both moves. For your passive move, pick any of your pieces on your side of the board, the side of the rope you're on, and move it one or two squares in any direction. That includes diagonally. Note, you can't move through any other pieces when doing this. Next, make a matching aggressive move. Move another of your pieces, the same number of spaces and direction as your passive move, but on the opposite colored board. This move can push other stones out of the way as long as they aren't in turn blocked by another piece. Any piece pushed off of any board uh, this way is removed from the game. Keep doing this until one of you manages to knock all the opponent's pieces off one of the boards. No one, not all. You don't have to clear all four. You just have to do one. That's it. You can now go out and play Shobu. It sounds simple, and mechanically it is. But trust me when I say it is not nearly as easy to clear a board as you might think. In this way, Shobu does what I want any abstract strategy game to do. I want it to be simple to learn and difficult to master. Yes, we say it a lot. Every reviewer says a lot. Publishers say it a lot. That's what this game is. Well, learning the available moves is easy. Knowing how to move your pieces to win is the real key, and Shobu has that in spades. Now, this is one of those games where you start off and you're like, all right, this seems pretty easy. Move a piece, passive, move another piece, aggressive. And you're knocking some stones off here and there and kind of going back and forth. And even halfway through the game, there's a bit of give and take going on, but things still flow pretty well and good moves are pretty easy to spot. Then things change. Suddenly, one of you is in trouble on one of the boards and the game starts to become more about preventing your pieces from being pushed than pushing your opponent's pieces. And that's the part of the game where it really starts to shine for me. On top of that, well, symbol, the components of this game are quality and give the game a great presence in front of you. Mm -hmm. 
the solidity of the stones feeling nice to push and making a great sound when they clunk off of a board onto the table. Yeah, I also dig the look and potentially even more so the like the feel of the game. I like the touch and feel of the stones. They're they're nice. They're tumbled. They're smooth. Um, like this is honestly one of those quality of life improvements we were talking about recently on our podcast that I appreciate. This game could have easily had a fold out board and cardboard counters, but instead it's got these handcrafted feeling components. Similarly, they could have gone with less abstract components using pawns or other components and themed it. But that would have been excessive and detracted from the simplicity of the gameplay. Yeah, when I was grabbing the description of this game from the publisher for our unboxing video, I always include whatever the publisher said about it, because at that point, I haven't usually played the game. So I don't I, I'm going to go with their words instead of mine. I caught one quote that I thought fit this game perfectly. It says Shobu evokes the feeling of go or chess. Sure but provides its own unique challenge. It feels immediately familiar and yet is wholly distinct and engaging. It's that second part about feeling immediately familiar that felt very true to me. This just feels like a game that's been around for decades, if not centuries, and something not something that's four years old at all. You could tell people that this was some ancient game discovered in the pyramids, and no one would argue with you unless they had checked the board game geek entry. Now, the only problem I can see with this game uh, for other people in game groups is if you don't like abstract strategy games or you don't play two player games. This is a two player abstract strategy game. Not much more than that. Um, so much so Smirk and Dagger, a company known for thematic games, didn't even bother to toss a theme on this. This is a game about knocking the opponent's rocks off a grid. While perfect information games like this that challenge each player's ability to play the game instead of relying on random factors are going to appeal to some gamers like me, I totally get these aren't for everyone. They definitely are for some people, though, as Shobu, while it hasn't won, has been nominated for four pretty big awards. Mm -hmm. The Origins Award for Best Game in 2020, the 2020 American Tabletop Games Best Strategy Game, the 2019 Golden Geek Best Two-Player Board Game, and the 2019 Board Game Quest Awards Best Two-Player Game. Like, look at that list. You got Best Game on there twice. Best Strategy Game, Best Game, and then Best Two-Player and Best Two-Player. Like, like, that is a, a, a impressive list of accolades. And I can't argue its place there, though I'm a little curious to know what beat it out, because uh, I was super impressed by Shobu. Like, if there's something better than Shobu for two-player games that came out, I'm going to have to try that. This just feels like an award-winning game, and honestly, it's one of the best two-player abstract games in my collection, and that's saying a lot, because this is a genre of game that my wife and I dig and that we basically collect. Now, the winners to, that beat it were actually Tiny Towns, Wingspan, and Watergate in two different categories. So All it's right, up so there Tiny with some, Towns, some big, yeah. uh, big players. So Tiny Towns would have been a game of the year and Wingspan game of the year, or best strategy game or whatever. I get though those fit, okay. But Watergate, I, it wasn't for me. We we did not love Watergate. Check out my Watergate <laughs> review to find out why that one didn't work for me. I, I will say right now, I would have put Shobu above Watergate. Well, now, if you enjoy this style of game, two-player, perfect information, abstract games, you should probably pick up Shobu. Fans <laughs> of these styles of games should love its easy-to-learn mechanics and difficult-to-master strategies. And if this style of game isn't your cup of tea, give it a pass. While it's a really good abstract game, it's an abstract game. If you don't like those, I don't think Shobu is going to wow you somehow. Well, that's it for our thoughts on Shobu, a great modern abstract strategy game that feels quite classic. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite two-player abstract game? Tell us about it in the comments or head over to our Discord at discord.tabletopbellhop.com and strike up a conversation there. Even if your favorite two-player game is Watergeep, as we said many times, not every game is for everyone. It wasn't for me, but surely enough people seem to dig that game. Now, I'll also be writing up a written review of Shobu over on the blog, and I invite you to check that out as well. That'll be over at tabletopbellhop.com. 